Today I'm framing up this sturdy shed almost all by myself. So we've got our foundation from the last video and it is 12 foot wide by 10 foot deep. I'm going with a lean-to style shed and I went with that because it's gonna be less materials and it's gonna be easier to construct, which means less money. And also, I just really like the modern style look of it. It's gonna have two great big doors on the front wide enough to pull in a mower or maybe even a tractor. And I'm gonna add three windows up above to let in some natural light and plus give it a little more style. The front wall is gonna be the most complicated, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the back wall. So this is a lean-to design. My back wall is gonna be a little bit under eight feet. So I went ahead and made my cut on this board and I clamped it down. So now what I'm gonna do is I just made up this little scrap. This is super official stop block. This is basically just so I can make some repeated cuts. And this is a cool little setup that I had using some Craig saw horses. Works out really nicely. Now I can just butt the rest of them up to this block, make my cuts, and I'll have all the same size. So these are gonna be my bottom and top plates for the wall and these run the full 12 feet. So I am just gonna butt these up together and then start marking out the locations for my studs and they're gonna be 16 inches on center. So that would be here. Now laying these out can be tricky. We will have plans available to show you everywhere to lay out and we'll have those at the end of the entire series. So I framed the whole foundation using screws, but this is gonna be a lot more fastener. So I went out and grabbed a framing nailer and I'll be using three inch nails. I'm going to crown all my walls so that the crown is on the outside. So I have a nice consistent surface for the sheathing. And we wanna end the project with as many fingers as we started with. So make sure you keep your hands away from where the nail is gonna go into. You do not want a framing nail in your finger. You always want to do your long walls first because then you can use the whole foundation as this nice flat building surface. I'm going to stand up the back wall now and since I'm by myself, well, my lovely wife Susan is filming me, but I'm going to show you how you can do this by yourself and basically you can use a little sleeper, I don't know what you call it, a sleeper or a little helper beam and what I could do is lay these out here and I'm going to screw this in right to the side here. This little screw is gonna act as a hinge so when I raise the wall up, this little arm is gonna come up and help support it and then I can attach the wall onto the foundation. There goes that. All right, I'm just gonna square this up on the back wall. Now a few framing nails in each little bay will have this nicely secured and ready for the sidewall. Well, we've got the shed version of mistakes were made and I got a little just air nailer happy. And while I have the side squared up and it's nice and tight here between the bottom plate and the outside ledger skirt board, wherever you want to call it, I neglected to check as I went down. So as I started getting down here, I am, you know, about an eighth of an inch off. And that's not great because as I put the sheathing on, then it's gonna have a hump, it's gonna be all weird. So I'm gonna have to go in and I'm actually just gonna pry it up and just saws all the nails off and then square it up and go back in with new nails. So yeah, don't do that. Attach the ends first and then come back in and make sure everything is square before you just start going crazy. Or if you use screws, that'd be even better. So the side walls are basically just gonna be a shorter version of the back wall. They're gonna be at the same height because I'm gonna add in some framing that's going to get that slope for the lean-to on it later. And then the front wall is gonna be quite a bit taller. And I still have the stop block set up so I can cut all the studs for the side walls at the same time and then cut the top and bottom plates and go ahead and get them all together. Now, I know I told you to do the long walls first, but I'm actually be doing the side ones and that's just because we're running out of daylight and I wanna get these done so that I can move them off to the side, do the front wall tomorrow, bring it up 
and then just insert the sides. So as far as moving stuff around, it would definitely be easier to do the front wall next, but I'm doing the sides first because I like to do it the hard way, I guess. I'm losing light in these short winter days, so I'm gonna leave these up here, come back tomorrow on the front wall, and then we can start standing everything up. Now, part of the reason that I'm even building this shed is to make more storage for a business that I have just started. So I started a little 3D printing channel that is FTBT 3D, and I was just printing a bunch of stuff and showing it online, and then all of a sudden people were asking, can I buy this, can I buy that? And we decided, yeah, let's do it. And so we used the sponsor of today's video, Shopify, to spool up shop.ftbt3d.com. Now Shopify is a commerce platform that lets you sell in person or online, and it actually integrates with a lot of the social media out there, including TikTok, which is where we get most of our sales from. We've only got a few products right now, so it was easy to get them up and running and start selling immediately online on Shopify. And it's great because we're not on a crowded marketplace, we're actually selling right through our social media posts, so we don't have to compete with anybody else's products. And we've got the whole family involved. I get on Shopify and I can buy discounted shipping labels and then I print them out with the packing slips and we just package them right around the kitchen table. Now they also have some great in-person selling options like Shopify POS with tap to pay on iPhone. And all of those are available even on the most affordable starter plan. There's a link in the description for a free trial at shopify.com forward slash fix this build. That is a perfect way to get a new product idea off the ground or to start that side hustle you've been thinking about. And a big thank you to Shopify for sponsoring today's video. And the front wall is definitely going to be complicated because we've got the double doors in the front plus the three windows up top. So I've got my full layout here, but the way I'm going to construct it, instead of having a top plate and a bottom plate, the very top is going to actually have a two by six header on it. So I'm actually going to build it from the base up and I'll show you as I go how that looks. Now, since the front wall is going to have openings, we're going to have different stud lengths on it. Unlike what I did on the side in the back where they were just all one size, I just marked an X where the studs would go. Well, on here, we want to make some designation. So my outside studs, I'm going to actually have four different studs here on the outside because we're going to have two different headers, one for the windows and one for the doors. And the way I'm going to mark that is a K for a king stud. That goes all the way to the top. And then a J for a jack stud. And actually, guys, I'm going to have two different lengths. I'm going to go J1 and J2. So that'll define my corner studs here. Now I can just go out and lay out the rest of the studs that will go into the front wall as well as the door opening. So I've got my king stud attached, which is gonna be the longest one that goes all the way up to the header. And then now I've got my first jack stud in. So I'm just gonna put this right up next to it. I will also attach it from the bottom, but then we're gonna nail it into the king stud. Every 12 inches is what I looked up and it looks like that's the nailing pattern. Then I'm gonna put one more jack stud here. And so we'll have a double jack that's gonna be supporting a two by six header that goes across the entire entrance. And then on this fourth spot here, this one is going to be my smaller, I call it a jack two. I don't know if you'd technically call it a crippler, but this is gonna be our stack up. And then we can start building some of the header pieces inside. Now you can get a feel for what I'm doing here. Up here and the top will be the header, and this is a two by six, which will be what our header will be made out of. So that can fit right in here on the top. I'm gonna to be putting a top plate on later that's gonna attach everything together. Then I'm also gonna have double two by fours running across that way. 
to support another header that's underneath the door. So that's why I did these shelves first, then we can stack it in and then everything should line up great. So I'll be using two two by sixes for the header, but if you have two two by sixes together, then it's actually gonna be an inch and a half less than the thickness of a two by four. So we'll solve that by putting in a little piece of this 7 16 OSB. This was left over from holding the rocks. It's really nasty, but we just need it as a spacer. With the two by sixes cut to size, I cut these little pieces and now I can just put this on here and we will make a little two by six and OSB sandwich. It'll be right at three and a half inches. Now I can fill in this next pieces, which can be the top of the door. The header for the door will go right underneath here. And then the top of this actually will be a double top plate and that will define the window opening up at the top. Now, before I put on that second plate on top, mid plate, top plate, whatever you want to call it, I need to transfer the locations because I want to put in my studs in between here because I can nail through one top plate really easily if I have a double top plate, I'm gonna have to toenail and that's just a pain in the butt. So I'm gonna use a little story stick and actually transfer all these lines over to this other top plate to make sure that everything is nice and parallel. I could measure, but things tend to get a little off as you start stacking all the studs. So a story stick makes it a lot easier. All right, I made up a header for the doorway and this should fit right in between here. If I'm lucky, ooh, that's nice. And then I have these other little jack studs that will go in place to hold it up. I'm just gonna nail everything off then we'll just have to do the windows. All right, we've got everything framed out here except for the windows. And I decided not to put a double top plate on top of this part here because it's not really carrying much load. And actually what I'm gonna do when you see it in the plans is I'm gonna add a top plate on top of this whole thing. I think it'll make assembly a little bit easier and it'll probably give it a little bit more structural integrity. And now I just have the little window blocking that I'm gonna put in. And I also cut a spacer so that I will be able to make sure that all the windows are the same size so that when we put those in, it's gonna go smoothly. Now for the center window, instead of measuring in from the left and the right, I'm gonna find my center point. So I already marked that down here at the bottom. And at the top, I know I'm at 77, but I'm gonna mark this and that's my center. Now I can use my spacer and put that right there. I'll clamp it in place and that'll make sure the window is perfectly centered instead of being off going from the sides. I'm trying to nail these from the outside because the inside is gonna be where the window is and I don't wanna have any obstructions. Uh, it's kind of hard to get down in between these two little tight ones. So I am gonna use some screws just to make sure that everything's nice and secure. All right, I brought in reinforcements because that wall I think is gonna be pretty heavy. So I would advise you to get some help when you lift it by yourself or don't lift it by yourself and get some help. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking well, we're gonna have to pull it forward a bit to go up with it. Cole, you get right there. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. oh, there, we there we go. Go up, go up. Oh yeah. All right. All right, y'all can let go. 
poo walk through. Oh, no, don't. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, we've got that front wall up. Now we can start bringing in the sides. And I just temporarily attached the front wall to the sides as well as to the front with some screws. And then we're going to bring the sides in, attach them to the back wall, then loosen up the front wall and tie everything together so it'll all be nice and tight. So I'm gonna flush up this side wall now to the back wall and to this outside edge here. And I'll just use this block to tell me when I'm good. And this time, I'm remembering to check the edge before nailing it down. <laughs> I'm just gonna clamp these together and make them flush. You really don't have to worry about it being plumb right now because the whole thing is gonna move a bit until we put the sheathing on. So once we put the sheathing on, that's gonna square everything up. Right now, we'll just rely on our measurements and get everything lined up. Line it in, pass that little tab. Use your fingers in there. Now rack it. Rack it? With that. Rack it. Uh oh. <laughs> it doesn't fire until that's fully depressed. So push it all the way in, then just one click of the trigger. There you go. Oh my gosh. There you go. Good work, son. You might be a builder just yet. <laughs> Minecraft builder. <laughs> the last piece is putting on the top plate. So we're gonna nail this in and it overlaps the sidewall and the back wall. And that really helps to, again, lock that together. And it just gives the extra durability of that second top plate. I'm gonna nail in the front wall, and this is actually gonna be removed once we put the door in, so I'm just gonna put one nail here and then nail off the rest. So next time, we're gonna put on the wall sheathing and the roof system to get it all dried in. If you wanna see that video, it'll be live right there. I wanna give a big thank you to FTBT Builders Club. I'm Brad, get out there and build something awesome.